Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Thank you for joining us for this conversation. Blue Lava is the first business platform for CISOs to manage their security program. Blue Lava guides security leaders to effectively measure, optimize, and communicate their security program with confidence and ease in one platform. Learn more at bluelava.net. HITRUST is a leading data protection standards development and certification organization that strives to safeguard sensitive information and manage information risk for global organizations across all industries and throughout the third-party supply chain. Learn more at hightrustalliance.net. CrowdSec, the collaborative and open source cybersecurity solution. Analyze behaviors, respond to attacks, and share signals across the community for free. Let's make the internet safer together. Learn more at crowdsec.net. Black Cloak provides concierge cybersecurity protection to corporate executives and high net worth individuals to protect against hacking, reputational loss, financial loss, and the impact of a corporate data breach. Learn more at blackcloak.io. Modern application development needs modern application security. With our award-winning application security testing solutions, Checkmarks enables developers to securely accelerate their work. Learn more at checkmarks.com. AppViewX is trusted by the world's leading global organizations to reduce risk, ensure compliance, and increase visibility through machine identity management and application infrastructure security and orchestration. Learn more at AppViewX.com. Sean. We're actually on video today. We are? And really? we're not streaming live. This is a recorded video. I don't know if I might have to put some special effects. Can you see me transform? I, I saw your transformation <laughs> through the years. Of, you know, <laughs> starting a long, time, a long, a long <laughs> time ago. I've known you that 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 long. We won't talk about the direction we're taking <laughs> of the transformation. It's a transformation. Uh, positive or negative. Yeah. We don't it, know where it, it started. Is, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that probably sums up a lot of people's feelings <laughs> for for life the past couple of years, and uh, and I think we're all aching for a sense of real life and a chance to meet each other in person, and and, and uh, I don't know if we'll have those hugs just yet, but certainly the the face to face, hey, how the heck are you, right? <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? What's going on? And of course, in the midst of all that, what's what are the latest threats? <laughs> how 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 has business changed in terms of risk and security and uh, policy and privacy? You know, Sean, that? that's a question that I don't get when I run into somebody I know. Let's say at the it. grocery store, like, what's the <laughs> risk level? You know, or <laughs> what's the next threat? But there is a place where we're going to be able to do that, and it's, it's not going to even sound that. weird. It is not going to sound. We're going to, it's going to be very prominent and very important. Uh, loads of conversations. People are probably going, "What are you guys doing?" Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you have no idea what's going on. If you're looking at this, you'll see Linda, Britta, and Cecilia on uh, from RSA conference, and uh, we're going to kick off our coverage with this conversation. Linda, Britta, Cecilia, it's great to have you on. It's great to be here. And can you see all of our beaming faces? Like we're all yeah. like this. When you're talking about June, we're like, yay. That's right. It's just there. <laughs> we, were, we were talking before we started that, that you're up there kind of getting getting things organized. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for all the physical space. Um, Marco, what do you think? Quick round of uh, yeah, who quick everybody round. is. Yeah, quick round. We uh, know we'll them very with, well, but we there may be well. somebody that is new. tradition to have new. this conversation. But yeah, uh, yeah. Linda, we'll, we'll start with you. Yes, so I, my name is Linda Gray Martin, and I'm the Vice President of RSA Conference. So I'm kind of responsible for it, working in tandem with this fantastic duo and many others. 
And I'm Britta Glade. I am Senior Director of Content and Curation. So I have the wonderful opportunity of working with a myriad of amazing speakers from across the industry who come in to share their expertise and really um, you know, build the intellectual capital and that warm environment that is RSA Conference. And I am Cecilia Marinier, and I run the Innovation, the Sandbox, and the Scholar programs, which are all going to be fabulous this year. A lot of hands-on activities, a lot of interaction. Again, the community just coming together and um, bringing the, the time and space to actually connect with each other and learn from each other. It's going to be a great experience this year. Oh, people are so excited all over social media because, you know, we had a little tease that it was going to happen earlier and then we had to postpone. So I feel like was it maybe right. planned to create even more expectation, you know, like one of those <laughs> advertising <laughs> campaigns? I don't know how much I, more you could build. <laughs> I, I yes, know it's not. No, true. it was not a marketing ploy, believe me. I know. Me. <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just kidding. So I, I want to hear about everything you just uh, quickly touched into, you know, the, the place, how it's organized this year, talking about the education side of things. But as usual, I like to start with the theme. So the yes. theme this year is transform. And uh, we, we have seen so many different themes through the years going from a more techno technology, more cybersecurity oriented than to more humanity. So I feel transform is just the right word maybe after these two years to, to get it started again. Yeah. So who, who yeah, wants well, to talk about that? Well, I can, I can definitely kick Please. off. And it's interesting, it's our 2021 theme was actually resilience. Um, which is a, a word, you know, we know it means something for the industry as well as for all of us personally. And I think it probably became one of those most used words <laughs> as we went through the pandemic. Um, but transform just feels to us so relevant for where we all are. And I don't just mean professionally, I mean, personally as well. You know, we've all been been through something the last couple of years. Um, but I think looking at the conference itself, why it feels so relevant for us is that we, you know, we, we come together at RSA conference, we positively impact the world of cybersecurity and we go through that transformation together. Um, and it's that togetherness, it's bringing the community together in person again after this absence of, of physical events, big physical events for two years. You know, So I think that's why we just feel it's so relevant. And like I said, we can't stop smiling when we think about bringing everybody together. There's just definitely that pent up need for for us all to gather again in person. Yeah, and I think for me, I mean, it's easy to mix resiliency and transform, at least in my mind, because it's very simple. Um, but it, I often wonder transform is more than just adjusting to your environment and your situation. It's actually thinking forward and perhaps even saying, this is what I want it to be and how do I how do I get there? So I don't know if any of that came through in content curation, perhaps, Britta? Definitely. And, and you know, we've, we've heard within the industry about digital transformation for quite a while now. You look at how organizations, I mean, you, so, so yes, there's sessions on that. Um, the Office of the BISO, um, uh, which, you know, very new-ish within organizations in the last couple of years, which also represents it's a transformation as organizations, you know, even the security function is moving from just a defensive technical posture to a, you know, different business offerings. It's a, it's a, it's a one up within what organizations can do. Um, I, I was actually, as Marco, as Marco, you and Sean were talking at the beginning, Sean, I was, I was picturing you as a, as a little caterpillar who is emerging as a butterfly <laughs> now, right? You're, which I think we're all little caterpillars somewhere, and some of us are butterflies, and some of us are in cocoon still, and some of us are at different places within our transformations, um, and that's that. That's what I, you know, again. Simple, simple little brain that I have here. Um, but that's the celebration I'm thinking of with RSA conference. Even when, when I look at the, the graphical treatment of it, you know, you might see origami shapes in there. You might see confetti that's been torn up and thrown. And, and we're, we are really hoping that's what's reflected in the theme. That's what you see in the theme. That's what you experience when you're there um, because we all are, you know, transforming personally and professionally. 
I like the Carter Pillar idea. Maybe, maybe you know, pass it to the creative <laughs> team for next year. Uh, yeah. Oh, that'd be that'd be something. Absolutely. <laughs> let me. Let me it's get, not too late. It's not too <laughs> late. I'll make a call. All right. So you were you were gonna change the old branding for for this year? The caterpillars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, bring your own caterpillar. Let's say that. Uh, or maybe not. Don't do that. Uh, Cecilia, I mean, it, it's hard to talk about transformation without thinking about the future. And, you know, the future means next generation. It means the, the, the new thinkers, the startups. So tell us about what can we expect this year for the sandbox and, and everything that it, RSS has always been, the conference has always been famous for that. So to give the opportunity to the, to the new ideas. Well, thank you, Marco. That's a great lead in. And yes, this year is very exciting. We actually had the most amount of submissions for the Innovation Sandbox Contest this year. So we're super excited. The slate is strong. It took the judges a long time to actually select the, the companies. We're announcing it soon. So like, we'll just make this a cliffhanger. Um, but I can tell you that, that it's a really strong slate of startups. And the other piece of this is also that early stage expo area. And we were able to, as we have talked in the past, we had uh, we were building out the uh, the structure and the spacing for conference to make sure that we were reacting to what was happening in the world. Um, but we're kind of excited to see that there's a change. And we were actually uh, able to up the amount of early stage expo companies to 35 from 30. So there's a lot of really cool companies coming into that space. Uh, and I'll add in uh, the sandbox part, which is where we bring in the villages, a lot of the DEF CON villages, and we are bringing in two new villages uh, to the space. One is on AppSec Village. Really excited about what they're bringing in. They have a lot of creative new ideas. They want to have book signings and uh, conversations in their space. Really fun. The, and then the other one is uh, Dark Arts Sandbox. And it's generally the Red Team Village um, group that's putting this together, but again, they're coming and they're going to bring some really interesting hands-on activities. So fun, fun, fun is what's happening over here. And Wait, it's all did, did you say dark art? Dark art villain. No Harry Potter. Are, are we, yes. No I Harry am, Potter. I, am I a love big it. Harry Potter fan. So when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, there is going to be. Up. Me. Right. <laughs> But we're also having some of the other other villages, and I just want to highlight, you know, it's the ICS village, which we've been seeing so much in the news right now about what's happening uh, with with the the malware attacks um, on our yeah. critical infrastructure, the IoT village, um, and uh, and several other villages and Sans Networks. So it's going to be a really good space. Lo loads of stuff, and I mean, I mean, I was looking through again the 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 whole agenda and the and the. I mean, there are programs and, and all kinds of stuff, um, but I want to get kind of the big picture from you, Linda. I mean, in, when I look at it, I always look for diversity in general, and that goes from topics to speakers to um, types of sessions. Are they presentations or panels? And so maybe, I don't know, this might cross over to some to some of the stuff that Britta looks at as well, but yeah. just generally speaking, um, the, the connection, I'm thinking like academia and uh, governments and industry and researchers and all this stuff. Maybe your view, Linda, first, and then, then Britta's uh, content perspective on that. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about RSA Conference is that there is something for everyone, you know, and I know Britta and team work so hard to make sure we are looking at that big picture view when we pull together. I think we have uh, 24 traditional session tracks this year, literally covering the gamut from kind of the more strategic kind of CISO suite tracks to the more hackers and threats kind of session. So I think we, we really do a good job of trying to cater to everybody. Um, Britta, do you want to add some more color to that? Yeah. And, and Sean, I really appreciate your characterization there. We, we call that capital D diversity, um, yeah. where d diversity is not single dimension. Um, and diversity is super, super, super important within our industry because, you know, we have stronger defenses when our defenses, you know, are representative of, of everything that we are. And RSA conference, I, I almost, I almost think of conferences, you know, little, 
think of it as Venn diagram. I can't, I can't help but talk with my hands. So I'm glad we're on video here. Right? I've got the, I've got the caterpillar. I've got the butterfly. But a Venn diagram. You know, and you, you've got great work that's done in policy. Great work that's done in, in legal. Great work that's done in privacy and this and that. You know, all these circles that are our ecosystem. Fine. RSA conference, the power of it is it, it's, it's that overlap in the Venn diagram. It's that water cooler conversation, if you will, that happens when someone who's passionate about policy has a in the hallway conversation with someone who's really deep in the weeds on how do we do, do um, you know, DevOps differently, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's the power that is RSA conference. It's the importance of bringing this whole ecosystem together so that we can have these big aha Venn diagram moments that right. really do change our industry, that really do change how our defenses are set up, that really do honor and recognize the importance of diversity. Um, and, and I'll actually point to um, you know, Cecilia's programs with students as a very key, very important part of this diversity, this next generation, and, and how do we make sure we take, embrace, involve, envelop this, this next group into what we're doing. And we see so much of that goodness in our community, that need to mentor, that need to involve. And, and I would just, you know, give a big shout out to please take that opportunity at conference. You know, when you look left, look right, see someone you don't know, you know, someone in front, someone behind you in line. Make them part of your network. You know, reach out. And if if you don't know them, great. Introduce yourself. If it's a right. if it's if it's a young, eager-looking, sparkly-eyed student, please um, make them feel welcome because they're a very important part of our of our community. Yeah, and Hugh Thompson always says, and it's a phrase we've coined over the years that RSC Conference is the convening authority, and it's true. It's like you you just it's that kind of one time when the whole industry gathers together. And I think that was an important point you raised, Richard. We were talking about it a little bit yesterday. I think now more than ever, people are just so keen to connect with each other. Um, and it is, it you know, take advantage of that great opportunity by having this all convening authority, by having everybody come together and make new connections because they're going to stay with you as you go through your career. And, you know, we all have people that we we go back to that we ask guidance from um, and in turn we become mentors for other people you know and I think that's a strong sense within our community of, of wanting to to do that so yeah and I, I want to go to Cecilia with the here that that supports society in a way that we want we we can't just adjust and drag along the next generation right we need to transform and, en and enable and empower that next generation to maybe think differently and think ahead and, and help bring us all forward so maybe cecilia if you can bring the, the scholar program perhaps and maybe college day and anything else that comes to mind in in the context of how do we leverage the next generation and maybe even before that uh, <laughs> to to help us uh, prepare for the future well, um, I'm glad that you asked that, Sean. It is something that I have a lot of passion around, thinking about like what is the next generation going to look like? And when we built the program for the security scholars, it went with the intention of having diversity as the number one, um, as one of the number one criteria. And as Britta mentioned, I'm talking about big D diversity from you know backgrounds and uh, and what they're studying to you know where their schools located and. Um, I'm proud that this year we actually have more women coming for the Security Scholar program than like a, our ratio is over 50% women. So it's really exciting to see that. Um, I, I do also witness what's happening in the industry writ large. So College Day was something that we're connecting with not just all the schools in California and asking them to promote it, but also with our sponsors that are helping us with the program and, and connecting with WISIS, for example, and they're sending it out to their networks. And what we're seeing in the industry is the future is, uh, is being laid down by a lot of people who give their volunteer time to connect with uh, students coming out and coming up to the next generation. So there's a lot of, I'm, I'm really excited to see where we're going and, um, and I'm glad for the question. Yeah, I, I'm going to go from this back to what Linda says about mentorship. 
I mean, I'm actually just fresh into an amazing mentor group that there is so many brilliant people there that are from astrophysics to, uh, you know, actually astronauts and people that have been writing books and about, you know, psychology and so forth. And actually, I don't even know why I'm there, to be honest with you, but I'm honored to be there. But all the conversation comes down to be like, it, it doesn't matter where you are if you're not looking back remember when you started and you wish there was that person or that group of person or that event that kind of changed your life. Sometimes it's just, just a conversation, just, just a word. So uh, I, I love to hear that. And I think that a really important part of it is the people that actually speak there. Cause you know, it's not just a speaker session for very special people. I mean, we want this word to go out to everyone. And so uh, I'd like to know from Brita maybe, you know, some highlights about these keynotes, because I know there are some really good one and uh, and I'm looking forward to that. So and, and interesting it. ones like why would why would those people I know, be I there and there. be connected uh, with each other? Yeah. yeah. I love the work that you guys do looking at the, and that, that's something I would definitely, for those listening, if you're going to be at RSA conference, spend some time looking through the agenda, strategically plan, plan and plot your movement through. Um, we were, we're always purposeful as we approach the keynote program. Um, this year we were perhaps even more deliberate in recognizing to the theme of transform um, there are amazing real life people who have real life, amazing stories of transformation, transformation for good, transformation that's inspiring, transformation that's, that's leading and changing other lives. Um, you know, Jessica Long is an amazing Paralympian who, oh, by the way, has a really amazing backstory and how she got to the point of being in the pool and being an amazing Paralympian. Um, but, you know, wow, we, we don't need to bring in, you know, people who are playing other people in Hollywood. We've got amazing figures right here. Jake Wood with what he's done with Team Rubicon and, um, you know, the, the inspiration and, and the real on the ground goodness that is happening because of his efforts. We have some amazing sponsors who are going to be delivering um, delivering sessions on the South Stage. We have, uh, as you mentioned, a, a variety of people that um, that will inspire, will will help us to all think differently. Um, some, hopefully, you know, provocatively. So, uh, you know, how how our our words and our actions make a difference within our workplace and across the industry. Um, we see people at RSA conference and the conversations that take place, the ripples are significant with what we do as an industry and our ability to, to impact for good, um, not just our security defenses, but how businesses are organized with how different organizations communicate and work with each other. So, so I, I, I appreciate that you looked so closely at um, what we've been doing within the keynote stage. And I definitely would encourage people to attend and, yeah. and be inspired. Yeah, and it's something we really put a lot of thought into. You know, we, we want to make sure that, that these kind of big keynote speakers are hitting the right note, you know, for the times, for the audience. And we try and provide a real blend of kind of the industry visionaries, um, but also the guest speakers. And as Britta mentioned, with these personal stories that, you know, I, I just I feel like the whole thing this year is going to we're going to go into it quite emotionally. You know, I think being back together, seeing some of these inspirational stories, be it industry related or not, just knowing how we have all changed as humans over the last two years. Um, I think it's going to be an, inter an interesting emotional roller coaster. Yeah, I, I, I love that you went there because I feel like even in our conversation uh, that we've been following for so long, the industry, I mean, it really is being changing. Like it's about telling more stories that sometimes they're not necessarily of, and I'm happy about that, not necessarily the breach story, right? Or, or the, the, the cyber crime piece, which is important. But it's about how we're growing this industry and how, of course, we fill the gap and, and of course, the diversity factor. And looking at the agenda, again, there is a lot of diversity there. So that, that's, that's really important. Um, anything 
that you want to add to that, feel free to do it. Uh, Cecilia as well, maybe for for the including more people in the industry, if you have a couple of uh, thoughts on that. And then maybe I'll, let's move into what we can expect different this year there from people that actually been there. And what is exciting for those can't even think that come there for the first time. So Cecilia, first to you, if you want to add to that, and then let's move to, to the picture. Well, I think um, in general, like what we've created for the different moments where people can actually meet together. And I'm going to point to Britta for her learning labs, because that's a moment where we're learning and sharing together and it's active learning. Uh, I think the sandbox offers the same thing where you go in and you have active learning, but it's partly getting the conversation started. You have a point of connection because you're in the whatever village you're in um, or running a CTF and, and going over into the lab over there. Um, and I think they, uh, we have those other pieces. Uh, there's a cyber ops. There are some networking pieces. There's a welcome reception. So I think at this moment, like what we want to see and what we're so excited about why Linda keeps saying we're all smiling is that it's the chance that we can help foster those other conversations that are getting started. So Britta, I'll turn it to you to see if you have anything else you want to add on learning labs or birds of a feather. Yeah. Um, we have been very purposeful this year in trying to create moments, one to few, one to one, one to many, really thinking about the power the, the power of people being together. We have a digital pass for those who, you know, who can't be there for whatever reason. So they can definitely benefit from the educational content programming from these really great experts who've spent a lot of time on really powerful programming. But we've also been very purposeful um, in, in carefully thinking through how do we create as many opportunities for people to really benefit from this 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 FaceTime that we have. Um, FaceTime is always important. Um, FaceTime is really, 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 really important this year. Um, as you know, we've all we've all transformed professionally and personally, and some of the personal transformation has been bumpy for some of us. We humans need other humans. We humans benefit when we're willing to share with each other, the wins and also the challenges. And I, that's another thing I'd really encourage people to, um, this is your community. We as a whole benefit immensely when we're willing to share, when we're willing to gather together, when our, when our Venn diagram comes together, right? Um, we're more powerful as a whole. And we really, we are so looking forward to welcoming people together. We have birds of a feather stretched throughout the week of conference. It used to just be, you know, breakfast and lunch. It's throughout. There's also space that's created as, um, you know, informal networking opportunity. Go grab a table. You met someone. I met this Sean guy, super interesting, sat next to me in the session. I want to talk like further, Sean. And he looks like a caterpillar, but I see a butterfly. I see a butterfly somewhere in there, right? But yeah, I, I want this Sean guy in my, in my, world for a longer time. I need to spend some time getting to know this Shanghai better. Um, so this, this is your event. This is all about this community and celebrating the opportunity to bring people together. Um, we've tried to reflect that across the experience that we've created for the week. We are so looking forward to welcoming everyone eyeball to eyeball and um, don't miss the opportunity to get to know some new people. I love it. And I know the answer to this because I asked before we started uh, recording, but the, 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 the physical layout, the Venn diagram of North and South and West yep. and, and everything going on. Maybe Linda, just a quick overview. Does it everything look the same? Somebody has been there before. It does. It does. We're using all the same space that we have done previously. Um, so from that perspective, it's not going to look any different. What might look a little bit different is that we're going to make sure there's plenty of space um, that people don't have to sit on top of each other. You know that we are making sure we create a comfortable environment for people because, you know, coming together in such a large crowd, it's it can be overwhelming, um, especially when you haven't done it for a couple of years. So our aim is or like to, two of our biggest aims are obviously to to create um a healthy, safe environment, but really a comfortable environment for everybody as well. 
Um, so that's something that you'll see a little bit different. One other thing I just wanted to point out um, that is different moving into the, to June is that the event is going to be four days instead of five. So we'd, we'd made that decision to change when we were looking at last year's event that was going to be a physical event before we flipped to virtual. But um, I think especially since the pandemic, um, physical events, I think, have just becoming a little bit shorter. Um, and we've also had feedback from our attendees as well that five days might be a bit too long. People don't want to travel on a Friday. They want to get back for time with their family at the weekends. Um, so all these things have impacted that decision. But I also wanted to point out that it doesn't mean we're cutting loads of content just because we're cutting a day. We're just distributing it slightly differently. So there's the same depth and breadth of sessions, activities, everything. The expo doesn't change. Um, we still have as many opportunities to earn CPE credits, which is really, really important for our community. We're just, we're just organizing things a little bit differently. Nice. And speaking of comfort, I mean, I've, I think I've been to, I don't know how many RSA conferences I've been to, but in January and February, March and April, and some of those months can be a little chilly. <laughs> June, yeah. June might be a little more comfortable outside moving between all the halls. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Who and, knows? And, and, Who knows? I know, Sean. I'm like, oh, right. right. It's the first time from San Francisco is like over here saying, wait, we do have June gloom over here. Do, <laughs> do you want me? Sweater, and we are the city that needs uh, layers. Just bring layers. Do, do you want me to I'm... quote Mark Twain about yes. San Francisco? Yes, yes. Please. It was the coldest winter has ever had was a summer in san francisco so <laughs> you really never know well i just want to say when i was there last week it was absolutely beautiful it was in the 70s and it was yeah. it felt so good to feel a bit of sun and lots of people said it may not be like this in june well we're crossing our fingers no no <laughs> yeah, we're crossing we're our fingers, all crossing our fingers. <laughs> i i can't tell you how many jackets i have from the number of trips that i've been to san francisco i didn't bring the right jacket so we were I, joking I about many. that. Like everybody that comes here has to go buy that polar fleece and yes. with the little San Francisco logo on it. Um, exactly. <laughs> it's a, That's yeah. the rule, right? You cannot get San Francisco without the, without the little, you know, the cut vest. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm going to bring it inside though, because there are a lot of talks and presentations and, and people get to submit those and they go through a lengthy process to get selected and, and make it onto the official agenda. But that that's just a slice of this community. And there's a whole slew of research and solutions and conversations that come through the expo hall. So I don't know uh, who wants to maybe take a moment to describe what's going on there. Is that going to look the same? Um, yeah. yeah, so I'll take this one. Um, it's going to look the same, but it's going to be half the size it has been in previous years. And, and that's because we are taking a very conservative approach to planning for this event. And we're planning a physical event for around 21,000 attendees instead of the 42,000 we've had um, back in 2019. Um, and, you know, we're, we're not we're in a different stage of the pandemic, but we're not out of the pandemic. And I think it's important to note that. I think people have varying uh, degrees of comfort in attending large events. So we are being, we're being, we're being cautious from an expo perspective, instead of the 700 exhibitors we normally have, we've limited it to 350 this year. So uh, we want to make sure that attendees and sponsors and exhibitors have an optimal experience, which means not having too many exhibitors, and trying to match the number of exhibitors that, to the number of attendees. Um, but you'll see all the same things that you have done before. We have the briefing center sessions. Um, we have our welcome reception in there. We have the expo pub crawl. So we have all the things that people have come to know and love about the expo. It's just on a slightly smaller scale. Nice, nice. And um, I know, I mean, there's so much. It, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about two things that uh, caught my attention, um, and then I think we'll we'll start to wrap because there, there's a there's a keynote on words and actions matter. Um, it's a CISO session, so I, I think yes, being, being a change agent uh, there, I, I think that's a conversation I hear a lot about, and I'm very interested to hear uh, those two those two speakers talk about that. And the other thing I, I think. A big trend, obviously, is uh, 
applications and everything being API driven. And there's a whole, I don't know, I forget what, it is, what kind of session it is, uh, DevSecOps uh, by DevOps, I think is leading that session. So I'm, I'm a big fan of AppSec and DevSecOps and that whole space. So that was another one that, that caught my attention. Um, I'm sure everybody has their favorite track and path and, uh, and hopefully can. Why, why don't we ask? What's your favorite? Yeah. Brita, I, oh, I you, you were pick favorite children. No, no, no. Yes. Kid, do I love best? Me just, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but I, I saw that you were about to jump in with the agent of change. So maybe, maybe that you want to add to it. I am Sean. You are a butterfly. You are no longer a caterpillar. <laughs> you have completely. No, it's I. I am, and I. I don't want to steal any thunder from the words and action matter one, um, because I do think it's going to be an incredibly impactful. You know, it's, it's two CISOs on stage together, um, sharing how changes that they made. And, and this was one. It took. I worked with them on the development of this of this South Stage keynote concept, and and it was it's two CISOs that honestly did not know each other previously. But I was hearing similar stories, you know, the vantage point we sit at with an RSA conference and the great conversations we get to have with these, you know, amazing experts and, and people from across our industry. And I'm passionate about this. How can I help to accomplish this? What, what do I do with this? So bringing these two, um, these two leaders together from very diverse um, backgrounds, very diverse um, industries that they serve to speak about efforts and actions they have taken within their organizations to really make a change, not just within the security function at their organizations, but really changes that happened within the security group that then became pervasive across the organization as a whole. And we're talking an organization like Starbucks. Um, so I, I would really encourage people to attend that one. It'll be recorded as well. Um, but that this this is this is the impact within our industry that we can and should be having. I think that'll be super inspiring. Um, I I won't pick a favorite child because I could never pick a favorite child. I will highlight though one area I'm super excited about, which dovetails nicely into the DevOps conversation that you had. Which you know, there's big changes happening there with things like S bomb, with things like you know, how do we look at accountability within our software across and trackable and and all of that good stuff. But we brought back our um, we have a protecting data and the supply chain track this year which is a really nice curated bundle of content that again when we look at some of the challenges that we're facing in in industry i think is very nice and representative and they were careful with you know there's there's technical elements in there there's policy facing elements in there there's organizational structure elements in there but it's a really nicely curated collection of content in and around how do we protect data and keep the supply chain um, more integrous. So there's my picks, but they're all good. All the kids are good. They're the all good. No, they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. But I, I want to I go ahead with the round of, uh, you know, not your favorite, but, you know, what you're really excited about or looking forward to. So Linda. And so I've got one. Sorry, putting okay, my hand go. up like I'm at school. Yeah, so go. I have to be honest. So at RSA conference, I spend a lot of my time in the keynote room, in the West Stage keynote room. And I'm really excited about those opening keynotes, which I want to point out on Monday afternoon this year, which is, is very different. It's A, because it's the first time you'll look around and see a room of nearly 4,000 people all together. So that's one thing. Just I think there's going to be an element of celebration to this, you know, that we've we haven't seen and it, or we won't have seen in the kind of way I think we're going to see this year, that kind of excitement of bringing people back together. Um, we've also got something really special planned to open the conference, which I'm not going to say anything about. I'm going to keep it as a surprise, but just, it's just that, that experience. I think we're all going to feel like the thudding in our hearts when it all kicks off and just experiencing that joy of we're here, fingers crossed. Nice. Well, it makes I me feel like I'm much I miss I miss live music. So <laughs> I'm hoping it's Metallica opening or something. 
You've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> wow. How did you know, I mean, Marco? It's, it's San Francisco. They're right there. <laughs> Sean, you were commenting something. Sorry, I got excited. No, I just I was just quickly going to say that uh, I often feel that at the beginning of those conferences, uh, RSA uh, specifically, where that, that initial rush of we're all together sharing the same space, uh, right? hopefully aiming for the same objectives to make things better yeah. and uh, collectively coming together. So, uh, yeah. Cecilia. It's hard to follow Linda there. She did a great <laughs> job kind of really putting it all together. And I am just excited as my peers here on this call, just to have everybody come together. I mean, there's going to be a lot of really fun activities and a lot of um, just uh, points of connection for everybody to enjoy. So I, I won't even, st I'll just leave it there. I mean, Linda left the cliffhanger. So I feel like we really should just go right there and say, you got to show up on Monday. If you don't show yeah. up on Monday. Yeah. And I don't take bribes either. So just <laughs> oh. for your listeners. Marco does. Marco. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll bust around with a dish. Well, we, we are going to be there. A number of our podcast uh, network hosts are there a number of them are speaking diana kelly along with uh teresa gow and teresa payton and lisa lee they have a session Lisa miller has a session yeah. uh chloe has many uh one with camille eddy and and also our good friend ryan louie who we met a number of years ago at rsa and on a very uh, important topic of mental yes, health yeah. transformation of mental health exactly yeah, yeah. I love ryan everybody should listen to that one yeah ryan's amazing yeah. and uh Chloe has many. And then uh, Philip Wiley also has a, a session. So it's going to be in Sandbox. Uh, yes. So a lot of great folks, of course. We're a little partial, a little biased, but uh, a lot of great conversations uh, from them. All of them will be uh, obviously available on the RSA conference agenda. I believe you can you can register to be part of them. I, I would encourage Reserve folks a to seat that. now. Reserve a yeah. seat, yes. Get your plan in place. Yep. And uh, all of our stuff, everything we're going to do before, during, and after, uh, we have a lot of conversations lined up beyond this one, uh, will be on itsbmagazine.com forward slash RSAC. Everything is there. Uh, even our, our host uh, speaking sessions, you can link, link directly to those from there. And you'll find this conversation visually and audibly uh, on that page as well. And uh, Linda, Britta, Cecilia, it's so good to see all of you and can't Me wait too. to see you all in person and to feel that energy again and to have those right. conversations again and to learn. Yeah. Look look Thank at you. this Venn diagram coming together. That's right. We have we're, to change these doing... square rectangles into circles. Brisa, do you have caterpillar? Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah. All right. Butterfly. And hearts. <laughs> and hearts. And hearts. And hearts, exactly. All right. All, All right. right. Everybody, we're, we're still looking forward to this. Share it because, again, people can participate even if they cannot make it there. So that's something that we learned during the pandemic. Uh, there is room for both and maybe even open the conversation to a wider uh, range of audience and people that wants to come in the industry and they honestly should it's a pretty great community yep. so thank you again you yep. bet thank I you love, so much i love this tradition thank you all thanks all bye 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 bye, -bye. AppViewX is trusted by the world's leading global organizations to reduce risk, ensure compliance, and increase visibility through machine identity management and application infrastructure security and orchestration. Learn more at AppViewX.com. Modern application development needs modern application security. With our award-winning application security testing solutions, checkmarks, enables developers to securely accelerate their work. Learn more at checkmarks.com. Black Cloak provides concierge cybersecurity protection to corporate executives and high net worth individuals to protect against hacking, reputational loss, financial loss, and the impacts of a corporate data breach. Learn more at blackcloak.io. CrowdSec, the collaborative and open source cybersecurity solution. Analyze behaviors, respond to attacks, and share signals across the community for free. Let's make the internet safer together. Learn more at crowdsec.net.
HITRUST is a leading data protection standards development and certification organization that strives to safeguard sensitive information and manage information risk for global organizations across all industries and throughout the third-party supply chain. Learn more at HITRUSTALLIANCE.NET Blue Lava is the first business platform for CISOs to manage their security program. Blue Lava guides security leaders to effectively measure, optimize, and communicate their security program with confidence and ease in one platform. Learn more at bluelava.net. If you enjoyed this podcast, share ITSP Magazine with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our columns. Thank you for listening.